you're a lawyer, Katanji Brown Jackson, which is the blackest name I've ever heard in my entire life for Supreme for anybody in high office. I thought I thought Barack Hussein Obama was or, you know was something, but Katanji Brown Jackson sounds like uh something like Cleopatra Jones in the Casino of Love, something from the seventies. Like I could see her get Christy Love. She out there fighting, fighting the, the white supremacy. I love it. Uh, you, do you know her? Because Jared Lodeholt gave us the whole rundown of this woman and why she is a great pick last week, uh, and he was spot on. Jared what Lodeholt, are your thoughts? Jared Lodeholt is an amazing intellect, and he's one of my best friends. Anything Jared Lodeholt told you about KBJ, he got from me. Uh, oh, by the way, <laughs> uh, fam, the, the, notor- the, the victorious KBJ, that, that, is, that is the moniker, get it trending. Uh, she won that thing. And she's going to win the confirmation, too. The victorious KBJ. I think she's amazing. Look, um, she has excelled at the highest level of the practice and the study of law at every opportunity she has had. But to me, uh, and we cannot overstate the importance of a Black woman on the United States Supreme Court for the first time. But to me, an equally important takeaway is that this is the first time, Marshall, that someone ascended to the who has substantial experience representing the accused as a criminal defense lawyer. That is so important. And not only as a criminal defense lawyer, but as a criminal defense lawyer to the indigent. She represents poor people. And so much of our law on search and seizure, on criminal rights, on criminal procedure, so much of it comes down to these old white males who have never been in the position of being pulled over at a traffic stop or having rights read to them that they couldn't understand because they were in a different language, or having to decide whether or not they're going to accept a public defender or not. And all of the things that come into the entire universe of criminal defense, she has that perspective and she has that experience. And that's critical. That's critical. We will see that as she develops law clerks and as as she develops her her mentees go on to become uh, district and circuit court judges, for her to develop a generation of, of, of judges and hopefully future Supreme Court justices who have experience with the practice of criminal law in the indigent context, that is a game changer for Black folks and really for the side of right uh, when we're talking about uh, the law in general. I appreciate that perspective. It does mirror uh, a lot of what Jared Lodeholt said last week. Uh, we're going to take some calls, 866-801-8255. Uh, Don Calloway is here. Also, before you came in, I was telling uh, telling the people about the anti-lynching, the uh, Emmett Till Anti-Lynching Act of 2022 that passed. Three Republicans voted against it yeah. and several others didn't vote, like Paul Go- Gosar, Zeldin Lee, Van Taylor, Randy Weber, Mike Michelle Cloud, Carol Miller, Mike Gallagher, and one Democrat, Mark Pocan, did not vote. For yeah. this, why is this important? Um, why is this an important act? And what? Yeah, yeah. What should it's we important thinking? because it is critical that we establish an infrastructure for things that are clearly hate crimes to be prosecuted federally as hate crimes. So we see a lot of things happen every day uh, that are racial in nature and that are abusive, discriminatory in nature. But often the federal Department of Justice does not have the tools to prosecute this person. We saw Ahmaud Arbery's killers get prosecuted and convicted federally. That is so incredibly rare. I've had friends in the Civil Rights Division for the Department of Justice who would have stayed there longer. Of course, they got offered three, four, five times the salary to go to big law firms, but they would have stayed longer if they thought that there was an infrastructure to convict police officers who beat Black people because they are Black. If they thought that there was an infrastructure to approach college officials who deny black students proper housing or student loans because they are black, right? So it's important that, yes, even when we know a crime is racially motivated and can therefore properly be determined as a hate crime, it's important that we establish a structure, an actual statute upon which to prosecute somebody. I don't wanna speculate about why some people didn't vote or, or voted against it, but historically, their logic is that these decisions should be left up to the states. And somewhat, we understand that, but we can never, 
we can never in this country leave civil rights up to the states. First of all, because that creates a patchwork of different rights among the 50 states plus the territories. But second of all, and far most importantly, history dictates to us that we cannot trust every state with people's actual civil rights. And civil rights are granted by the constitution. They're not granted by the people of Epps County, Alabama or whatever else it might be, right? And we cannot trust, uh, we cannot trust the constitution and the federal department of justice establishes a floor for rights. Mm. No state can go under. And believe us, some of them would go up under that if they could. So it's important that we establish this floor and people tell you that this is a state's rights discussion you tell them that that cannot be the case because we've seen what states will do to civil rights based upon how they're politically feeling at the moment. Yeah, Thomas Massey, one of the uh, three who voted against it from Kentucky, uh, that was one of his reasons. So I'm glad that you uh, made that uh, clear. On Monday, that happened. Emmett Till anti-lynching almost unanimously passed in the House. And at the same time yesterday, they shot down the House Democrats, failed to pass legislation that would ban discrimination against people with hairstyles that are commonly associated with being black. The Crown Act did not pass. It was voted down 235 to 188. It did not attract enough Republican votes. And I guess the Republicans said, well, I gave you the Emmett Till thing. We not vote for your hair, too. This bill was introduced, of course, by Representative Bonnie Coleman from uh, New Jersey. Hey. And was pushed by lobbyists like um, Ajua uh, Asamoa, uh, who has been all over the the country pushing for this. And it passed in several states. I was hoping the last day of Black History Month that they would uh, pass this because people should not be discriminated. Look at you, Don, with your twisty turns on your hair, your kingly crown moving towards uh, the sun. That's not professional, it's that not, they would say. Um, Sister Ajua has done the Lord's work and every Black household should know her name because, listen, we've all dealt with our sisters who pat throughout the course of the day. We all know what that comb on the stove means. Uh, And this is a common experience in our communities. And Sister Ajua has done uh, yeoman's work. She is an absolute heroic figure in in modern black history for what she's done with the Crown Act. Um, Honestly, I I, I didn't check out, I didn't even know that it was moving federally. I thought it was a state by state thing, but I'm disappointed, you know? Um, And I'm sure that all of that is about the state's rights stuff that I just discussed with respect to the Emmett Till Act. we're not gonna get this modern Republican party to act like it got some sense, at least not in the house, right? So yeah. the Crown Act was probably a bridge too far for them, but that doesn't mean it wasn't a righteous effort. And I applaud what she's doing on the state and county level uh, throughout the country. 